Hello YouTube, I'm Chris and welcome to Planet Earth. Coming up this week, insects with ears like humans, a tortoise Jurassic Park and robots inside cows. Shall we juice? Humans and grasshoppers. Now you might not think we've got all that much in common, unless you're a kung fu student trying to attack your master. <laughs> Sorry. But researchers studying bush crickets have discovered that actually we do. And no, it's nothing to do with massive legs or strange eyes or singing, but ears. Yes, ears. Now, while our ears are obviously located on the side of our head, a grasshopper's are on its front knees, which is pretty weird. Studying Copipora gorgonensis, which is a bush cricket with an orange face from South America, Dr. Zapata, a sensory biologist at the University of Lincoln in England, revealed that the cricket's tiny ears have a structure comparable to that of humans, meaning that they hear in a similar, albeit slightly higher pitched way. In humans, hearing relies on three stages. The eardrum collects the sound, then the middle ear takes that sound and turns it into frequencies, and the inner ear sends signals to the brain. All of which means that we hear, well, everything we hear. And the cricket's ears also perform these three steps, something previously unknown in insects. The team are now looking into the ears of other cricket species, hoping that this similar system for sound detection could help engineers to develop microsensors, which could be used in hearing aids for people. Next up, giant tortoises. When Lonesome George, the world's only Pinter Island tortoise, died in June of 2012, it was thought that the species had sadly become extinct too. But a team of researchers from Yale University have discovered that the tortoise, a subspecies of the Galapagos tortoise, may still be alive and well on nearby Isabella Island. Located about 60 kilometers away from Pinter Island, researchers are not quite sure how the tortoises got there, but it is thought that hungry fishermen and pirates may have carried them there in the early 19th century, and that these salty sea dogs dined so heavily on the giant tortoises that they may be the main reason for their decline. However, after collecting DNA from more than 1,600 giant tortoises on nearby Isabella Island, the team discovered that 17 individuals, with five of them less than 20 years old, carried some of the same genes as George, suggesting he was not so lonesome after all. And with the discovery of these hybrids, the researchers say that the tortoises could be selectively bred to resurrect the Pinter Island subspecies. But it's a process that could take up to 150 years. It could even be like a tortoise version of Jurassic Park. Although I doubt a tortoise would attack a jeep, even if it is a giant one. And finally, cows. They spend all day eating grass and digesting huge volumes of vegetation. And as they say, what goes in must come out. And worldwide, mm. domestic cattle are responsible for around 30% of all human-related methane emissions. And as all that gas helps to heat up the already warming atmosphere, eco-conscious researchers from the Australian Sustainable Agriculture flagship project are using robots to help out. The scientists want to install tiny robots into the digestive tracts of cows that will stay inside them for weeks. Causing them no harm at all, the robots will monitor the amount of methane that the cows produce. And with the data that the robots beam back to Cowpat HQ, the researchers hope to be able to find out which foods generate the most gas, allowing scientists to create more eco-friendly diets for cows that they hope will result in far less methane being released into the atmosphere by those gaseous bovines. So that was this week's juice. Why not like us or subscribe? And if like George, you were the last of your kind, let us know what you would do in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.